Hi everyone, it's Marissa from BumblebeeApothecary.com and today I'm doing an updated video on our current grocery sources. on where we source our different food. No, let's do it. The way that you want to find it. Or, let me do that again. Uh, Joel Salatin has a really interesting idea where next category of stuff so this is another requested video. Thank you guys always for your video requests. Keep those coming. You can leave comments down below and I always love hearing what you guys wanna see. Let's jump into our current sources for groceries. So first let's talk about meat. So we like to get meat from local farms and we get beef currently from a farm in Colorado that is called Prairie Opal Ranch. And a couple times throughout the year, usually in the spring and then also fall, they um, have beef available, so you can get whole, half, quarter. I'll have their information down below, but they have great practices when it comes to raising beef, and we really have liked them. We've been buying beef from them for a number of years now, and very, very happy with it. Very high quality, so delicious, and we love that it's all grass-fed and naturally raised and everything. For pork, we have another local source for that. Um, it's actually a certified GAPS coach friend of mine, also in Colorado, who raises all natural pork, and they raise them free range, all natural, that's really, really delicious. And I'll have their information down below as well if you're local and want to look into them. But while I'm listing off these local meat sources, let's take a little side road for a second. It doesn't matter where you are, if you get in contact with your local Weston A. Price Foundation chapter, they will be able to point you to the local resources in your area and connect you with people who are raising meat the way that you want it to be raised. So I'll have a link down below also for where you can find your local Weston A. Price Foundation chapter and you can find their website, get in contact with the leader or sometimes there's more than one leader and they'll help you find all the great sources in your area. Oftentimes these are kind of hidden and not so obvious to find just if you're looking around on your own. So it's really valuable to be able to have a resource like the Weston A. Price Foundation and the local chapters to be able to help you find those things. So you could find beef, uh, pork, lamb, chickens, all those kinds of things, eggs, um, by getting connected with resources like that. So then for lamb, we have the same thing. There's another local farm here. Someone else also raises grass-fed lamb. And again, we've been really, really happy with this lamb. We've been getting it for a number of years as well. It's all grass-fed and just raised very cleanly, so it has a great flavor. I know in the past I've had lamb before that had a very strong flavor. It's not the case with this one at all, so I think it has a lot to do with quality and how they're raised. For poultry, we've been raising our own meat chickens. We are currently in the process of trying to move to a place where we can do more of that and raise more of them. So yeah, so that's kind of where the house updates are fitting in and trying to move that process forward so that we can raise more meat chickens and continue to do more of that type of thing. We also have our own eggs. So we have egg chickens in the backyard laying hens and so we get eggs from there. These ones are on their third year of laying and so they're starting to slow down a bit. So this year we've been buying some uh, pastured eggs as well to supplement, but for the most part, most of the time we're able to just eat the eggs that we raise ourselves, which is, we're really thankful for that. We do have a new batch of chicks coming, so I'm hoping to vlog a little bit when we get those and kind of include those so you guys can see them as well, but they'll replace our current flock and then we'll have more eggs again. Another thing sort of related to this that we source locally as often as we can is honey. So we like to get raw honey from local beekeepers because when the honey is local and it comes from bees that make honey from the plants that are around you, it has amazing benefits. So we'll get that. 
And then the next category is milk. So we get raw milk from, again, a local farm. They are a distance away from us, but they have drop points closer to where we live. So once a week we go to the drop point and bring our milk home. In Colorado, it's not legal to actually buy raw milk, so you won't find it in stores or anything, but we do what's called a cow share, where we pay to help take care of the cows and then we get milk as well. So again, if you're looking for raw milk sources wherever you are, there's a really fantastic source uh, put out by the Weston A. Price Foundation. Their website is called realmilk.com. I'll put a link for that below as well. But that's really valuable for finding raw milk wherever you live. And they've been able to work to get sources for almost all 50 states now. Sometimes we'll want more grass-fed cream than the raw milk dairy has available. And so when that happens, then I'll get a low temp vat pasteurized grass-fed uh, organic cream from a brand called Kelowna Supernatural. And you can find those in health food stores around where I live. I know that they're pretty widely available in a lot of the United States, like more of the West Midwest area, I believe. But you can find similar brands other places, but it's from Amish family farms. So it's not ultra pasteurized. It's really high quality. And then when we ferment it, make it into kefir cream, that's like adding life back to it. And so then it's almost as good as raw. Also something that's interesting to know that Weston A. Price Foundation has information on this, but they talk about that cream is actually less damaged than milk when it's pasteurized. So cream can be a better option if pasteurized is your only choice. For butter and cheese, I like to get those in bulk from Azure Standard, so it's a monthly buying co-op, and I'll talk about them a little bit more because I get some other things from them as well, but that is our main source for butter and cheese as well. They have a really nice uh, European-style vat-cultured butter that's from cows on pasture, and we've been really happy with that, so I like to get bulk amounts of that every month. And then also they have some really nice raw cheddar cheese, and that's uh, also available in bulk so I get a bunch of big like two pound blocks that will last us for the month and it's really delicious we really liked it. I'll put the butter and the cheese links to both of those in the description box if you'd like to find the exact ones that I'm talking about. For produce, we have a couple of different things. We like to grow as much of it as we can. In Colorado, it's not the most ideal growing situation, but we do the best that we can. It's kind of a dry climate. It's a short growing season where we're at, but we like to grow things like winter squashes, summer squashes, pumpkins, uh, cucumbers for making pickles. We'll do some tomatoes for fresh eating herbs as much as we can. Those are kind of challenging, but we try to do some. We'll do onions, we'll do beets, cabbages also for making a big batch of sauerkraut every year. I try to focus on growing the things that are either more expensive to buy or are just something that I really want to have very high quality for fermenting. So like making pickles, sauerkraut, um, beet kvass, those kinds of things. And then the squashes, those really add up when you buy them at the store. So I try to grow as many of those as we can, as well as pumpkins. And then to supplement, since we can't grow all the produce that we would like to, that we need to use, we also get some from a place called Misfits Market, and I'll put them in a link down below as well. But it's like a discount organic grocery supplier, so they take things that are like misshapen or they have a surplus of them, so you get better prices than you would at the grocery store. Most of it is organic, I just pick the organic ones. And then they get delivered to your house once a week, so you can go in and edit your order ahead of time. They have some grocery uh, items as well, but I usually stick to just the produce from them. And so that can be a really great way to get organic produce, and it's convenient because you just order it and then it's delivered for you it saves trips to the store which for anybody with small kids like me then that makes it easier so I've been really liking that it also helps with budgeting too because you just pick okay here's my produce that I'm bringing in for the week you work with that during the week instead of making a bunch of multiple trips to the store all the time so I find that it's helpful for that as well and then speaking of the local store, every now and then I will go into like a local health food store to pick something up that I maybe forgot or didn't anticipate that I would need. I try to really keep that to a minimum though, just because it really does help with budgeting if you just stick to kind of your main plan of what you're getting for the week or month and work with that instead of a bunch of trips to the store all the time, that starts to add up. And the quality isn't quite as good usually too. For baked goods, depending on how much time I have, I will make things myself or lately I have been really liking a 
place called Organic Bread of Heaven. I'll have a link to them below, but they are a place where you can get really high quality baked goods. So sourdough, sprouted, they have things made from spelt, really nice. So it's basically just like you would make it at home, but you can buy it. So I'll do a monthly order with just some really basic things like hamburger buns, a couple loaves of bread, a couple pizza crusts usually, and then they have noodles too. So they have uh, sprouted sourdough spelt pasta as well. So I'll, I'll keep it pretty minimal and we make it last the whole month. And that's just really nice to be able to have some of those things that I don't have to spend time making. Just in the season of life that I'm in right now, things can get pretty busy. So it's just a really nice help. And I know that there's a lot of other people in the same situation where just being able to buy something like that sometimes could be really helpful. So I'll have them linked down below as well. And then my other main source of grocery items is, like I was mentioning before, Azure Standard. So like I said, I get the butter and cheese from there, but I will also get a lot of pantry staple items from there as well. I'll get whole grains to grind into flour. Uh, I will get spices different types of baking ingredients. Vinegar, apple cider vinegar is a good thing to get from them. I have another video where I do a whole Azure standard haul. I have more than one of them up by now, I think. So you can go look specifically, here's what I bought from Azure standard that shows my typical order from them. But I'll get like those pantry staple items, grains, seeds, buckwheat, millet, oat, any of those kinds of things. They have a lot of things that you can choose from. They have produce as well. I find that since it's a once a month thing, it's not as easy to rely on that, but if that's something that would work for you, you could do produce from them as well. But yes, so the dairy, cheese, butter, and then more like pantry staple items come from Azure. So do an order from them once a month. And then the last place that we do use, we've thought about canceling our membership, but for now we still keep it. I think we totally could cancel it and get these same things from other places. So we may end up doing that, but it's Costco. So I know I don't love Costco for a variety of reasons, but we do still shop there for a few different things. So we'll get some frozen vegetables from there green beans, broccoli, peas, things like that. We will get frozen berries from there. We'll get maple syrup. We'll get the canned sardines that they have a pretty high quality one. We will get some coconut oil. They have the big bulk containers of coconut oil. Costco is a great place to get a really good deal on bulk Epsom salt, so that can save money. And then also the sparkling mineral water sold in glass bottles. You can get big cases of that, so sometimes we like to have those for fun, and it's another place to get a pretty good deal on that. So yeah, things here and there like that that you could totally live without, but Costco is pretty convenient for getting a good deal on them, and currently those are some things that we still get from there. And then let's talk about seafood a little bit. So I'm in Colorado, which is landlocked, so it's not a really great source for having seafood on a regular basis. Once in a while I will order some online, like for example US Wellness Meats has a seafood department now, and so that can be a good place. I'll sometimes get them from places like that, or I'll do like I mentioned the canned sardines from Costco. So we're pretty minimal with seafood. And then talking about meat and like what we usually will eat and buy, um, some people were talking about this in some comments, which is a really good question and a really good topic to talk about. They're talking about how, like, for example, in a what we eat in a week video, why don't you eat chicken or seafood? And so, yeah, we do. I actually have a lot of videos up already with chicken recipes, seafood recipes. You can use the search bar on my channel and search for those and you can see my videos that I have. But we tend to eat what we have the most of at a time and we are getting a little bit low on our chickens that we raise ourselves we have more beef and more pork right now so that's why some of the more recent what we eat in a week or day videos are more focusing on those but yeah so another thing is joel salatin talks about this in some of his books i think it's in the one called folks this ain't normal and he talks about which meat traditionally historically was more eaten commonly and then also which animals that we use for meat contribute more to the environment and are better for like the earth overall and everything so he talks about how beef, so raising beef cattle on grass, grass-fed beef is actually very, very helpful for the environment. And so if you make a practice to eat a lot of beef, that's kind of like something that you're doing to benefit the environment. So you can think of it that way. He talked about how historically and traditionally poultry and chicken and things like that was like a delicacy and something that people ate only for special occasions. And so I was like, huh, that's a really kind of a nice way to keep it in mind because it is more budget friendly, it's more practical to have beef most of the time and then save chicken more for the special occasion types of things. So I've fallen into that more thinking of it that way. So the beef is like your everyday thing. Same thing with lamb and then chicken 
Uh, maybe pork too is more like a special occasion once in a while. And then, yeah, depending on where you live, seafood could be more regular if you have a great source for it a lot of the time, or you could treat seafood more like we do as a very special once in a while thing just because there isn't as much of it around. So again, this is just what I've decided to do based on what I've read and what works well for us. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts. It's really interesting, I think, to think about your food choices being, you know, budget-friendly, practical, benefiting the environment, you know, all that kind of thing is nice to keep in mind and just something interesting to think about. Okay, so I hope that you enjoyed hearing about our current grocery sources and where we're currently getting our different food items from. Like I said before, I will have links in the description box for as many of these things as I can to show you specifically what I'm talking about if you want to go find them, as well as a link to where you can find your local Weston A. Price chapter so that you can get connected with the local resources wherever you live. It's worldwide, so be sure and check out that description box for links to those things, as well as free ebook and other things that I have made for you. I have some new meal plans down there, which you'll definitely want to check out. If you did like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with anybody else you think would find it interesting or helpful. And if you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I get out new videos every week on nourishing recipes and natural living. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.